پی ٹی آئی ایکٹیوسٹ اینڈ لیڈرز آر بینگ پکڈ اپ فرام دیر ہومس آل اوور پاکستان سپورٹرز آف دا پارٹی آر کالنگ اٹ کواز آئی ملٹری ڈکٹیٹر شپ آئی ایگری ہاؤ ایور دس ڈکٹیٹر شپ ڈو ناٹ اسٹارٹ ان ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری اٹ اسٹارٹ ان ٹوینٹی ایٹین ٹل پیپل ڈو ناٹ سی واٹ از ہیپنگ ٹو ڈے ایز اے کنٹینیوشن for meaningful change in Pakistan. This is not new. This is not unprecedented. What people faced during Zia's fascism was worse. It was much, much, much worse. Nadeem Farooq Paracha mentioned how Zia al-Haq wiped out two villages in Sindh with bombs to kill the movement for the restoration of democracy. This is the price people of Pakistan have paid for democracy. Protesters in Pakistan have faced firing squads, gunfire helicopters and bombs. What is happening to PTI is nothing compared to what has happened to people in the peripheries. It does not justify what is happening today. It just puts it in context. There is a long list of the state acting with absolute brutality. This video is not about that. This video is about understanding how we got here. How politicians keep getting used against each other. How we never learn the same lesson. How Pakistan lost when Imran Khan was created to destroy the charter of democracy. The 90s were a lost decade of musical chairs. Pakistan lost out on a lot by PMLN and PPP working with the establishment to remove each other's governments. Democracy returned to Pakistan after a decade of a military dictator. We got a decade of political instability instead, followed by another decade of a military dictatorship. This is the story of Pakistan. But there was hope for the story to be rewritten. On May 14th, 2006, Nawaz Sharif and Benazir Bhutto signed the Charter of Democracy. the most important part of which was an acknowledgement of their past sins and a firm commitment that they will not collude with the military in the future to bring down democratically elected governments the two biggest parties in pakistan set aside their differences and promised not to act against each other at the behest of the military establishment in pakistan this was huge this was hope this should have been the naya pakistan unfortunately benazir bhutto was assassinated just a year later pakistan did see elections though A democratically elected government came into power in 2008. The Pakistan People's Party was elected in after a decade of a military rule. History was repeating itself two decades later. But would we have a different ending? The Charter of Democracy wasn't perfect. Nawaz Sharif did try to destabilize the elected government twice. First during the lawyers' movement and second during Memogate. But we saw nothing that can be compared to the heydays of the IGI in the 80s and 90s. Despite a judiciary putting a stranglehold on the executive, a military re-establishing its control after Memogate and a prime minister being dismissed over Iftikhar Chaudhry's hubris. Somehow, the PPP managed to complete a full term and Pakistan saw its first civilian transfer of power in 2013. This was big for Pakistan. India achieved this in 1957. Democracy gaining space does not happen overnight. It is a slow, drawn-out process. Through politics, compromise and discussion, PPP and PMLN were able to remove 58 to B. the law used by presidents to arbitrarily dismiss elected governments they managed to pass the 18th amendment to the constitution despite trying for over a decade the establishment has still not managed to undo the 18th amendment pakistan lost its eastern wing because for 24 years the demand for provincial autonomy was seen as treason the insecurity of the center and the desire for the one unitization of pakistan saw the separation of the country it is what has led to resentment and separatism in kp balochistan and sindh With the passing of the 18th Amendment, politicians managed to give provinces more autonomy and increase the money available to them, as opposed to federal institutions controlling the entire budget. This is how you win, not by burning a fake plane at a traffic roundabout. PMLN came to power in 2013, and by 2017, they had managed to end the power crisis. Load shedding was largely a thing of the past for most of Pakistan. After a decade of musharraf that resulted in almost a civil war breaking out in Pakistan, rising terrorism and resentment in Balochistan, Two democratically elected governments managed to stabilize the economy, fight terrorism, reduce extremism, defeat TTP, give Balochistan more resources, open CPEC to reduce the dependence on the USA, end load shedding, hold elections, increase provincial autonomy. They were both not without their ills and shortcomings, but at least democracy was now going to flourish in Pakistan, right? There was one caveat to all of this. Imran Khan, the man who labeled the Charter of Democracy a mokmoka, who started a campaign against the 18th Amendment. things that should have been seen as progress for pakistan things that reduce the role of the establishment imran khan turned the public against them today people are crying out for all the political parties to sit together come to an agreement and establish the rules of the game except it already happened 17 years ago 
and the military establishment used Imran Khan to destroy it. Project Imran Khan was relaunched with a massive jalsa in Lahore in 2011, precisely because the establishment feared their role in politics after the Charter of Democracy. Imran Khan was no stranger to the military establishment of Pakistan. Imran Khan was first approached by Lieutenant General Mujibur Rahman in the 80s. Much like ex cricket superstars are probably being groomed today for politics a decade later. Project Imran Khan truly began in the 90s, though. Ziaul Haq's colleagues like former DGISI Hamid Gul groomed Imran Khan to get him into politics. If you hear Hamid Gul's speeches in the 90s, you'd think he was reading an Imran Khan speech from a week ago. Abdul Sattar Eidi has gone on the record to say Hamid Gul and Imran Khan approached him with a plan to overthrow the Benazir Bhutto government in the mid 90s. Project Imran Khan was stalled when General Pervez Musharraf took over. Imran Khan fully supported the general in the first couple of years. General Pervez Musharraf even went on the record to say Imran Khan wanted to be his prime minister. A suggestion the general laughed off. Imran Khan grew back into prominence a few years later due to the protests against the drone attacks by the US and Pakistan, a policy that the Pakistani military establishment was against. Imran Khan was given free airtime every single night to gain media prominence and give his views a free audience of millions to let him build his narrative. The same narrative the establishment has had for decades. All politicians are chore, Pakistan needs a strong leader and the copious use of political Islam for personal projection. Imran Khan became anti-Musharraf when Musharraf had largely lost support from within the establishment. It is no secret that by the end General Kiani was helping the movement against Pervez Musharraf. When Project Musharraf wrapped up and democracy was restored with the Charter of Democracy signed and PPP and PMLN presumably smarter after their mistakes in the 90s, the establishment needed a third force. Former DGI side General Zaheel Al-Islam has said that publicly too. In steps the cricketing hero of 1992. with the massive 2011 jalsa facilitated by the intelligence agencies of Pakistan it is true that many people went off their own accord a decade of free media had helped build him up as a political force but that groundswell was supported by the establishment imran khan did not need to do much to win over the narrative general pervez musharraf had reinforced for a decade how pakistan's problems were these corrupt politicians a lesson they all had put into the textbooks of pakistan so much so that every citizen of pakistan grows up being brainwashed into thinking the number one problem of pakistan is corrupt politicians whereas the number one problem actually is military interference in politics imran khan co-opted this decades long establishment project and the establishment helped him form a party urging people like jangir tareen to join the tehri imran khan's popularity also grew with nightly appearances on tv he would later have a falling out with jio but it was jio and particularly hamid mir who built him up There was a time you'd think Imran Khan was the co-host of Capital Talk, but when Hamid Mir was shot, Imran Khan labeled him a traitor for naming the establishment as being the ones behind his assassination attempt. Imran Khan led a campaign against Hamid Mir and Jio for being against the Pakistan army. Years later, there would be an assassination attempt on Imran Khan. This time, Imran Khan would lead a campaign for himself to get the right to name the establishment as being the ones behind it. Well, well, well. How the turntables. By the time the 2013 elections came around, it was obvious PMLN would come into power. Imran Khan was popular but not enough to be a massive national electoral force. With the TTP targeting his opponents in KP, PTI had a free run in the province to form a coalition government. The 2013 election results were largely accepted. It is only a year later that Imran Khan's movement to deceive the prime minister over allegations of dhandli truly began. PTI supporters complained that Imran Khan was not allowed to complete a 5 years term as the prime minister of Pakistan. But the PMLN government was barely a year old when Imran Khan wanted the prime minister to move. As Azhar Syed has revealed how the then DGI Syed General Zaheel Al-Islam met Imran Khan in London to plan the 2014 dharna. General Zaheel Al-Islam also had reportedly asked General Rahil Sharif to do a military coup, but the general had refused. PTI destabilized Pakistan, attacking PTV and the parliament, and at the end achieved nothing. Years later, both Shahid Masood and Imran Khan admitted that the Najm Sethi panty puncture story they built the entire campaign around. was a lie what the destabilization did manage to achieve was it gave rahil sharif leverage over nawaz sharif and he managed to convince nawaz sharif to green light a military operation pti had strengthened the establishment against a civilian government this was a loss for democracy and a win for the establishment civilian politicians have always had a relationship with the establishment nawaz sharif also started his political career with zia ul haq but imran khan and pakistan tehreek e insaf was supported for a decade by the ISI from Shuja Pasha to Zahirul Islam to Faiz Hamid General Rahil Sharif stepped down in November 2016 after Nawaz Sharif had reportedly refused to give him an extension and General Kamar Javed Bajwa became the new chief of army staff Don leaks had already happened and the establishment had decided Nawaz Sharif must go the era of the same page was upon us the Imran Khan General Bajwa Sakin Misar nexus ensured Nawaz Sharif would disqualified in a symbolic judgment in the Panama case using General Zia ul Haq's article 62 and 63 of the constitution 
a legal principle that has not been replicated in any other case. Imran Khan has previously admitted General Bajwa sent brigadiers into the joint investigation team to ensure Nawaz Sharif was removed. Just this week, in an official petition to the court, Imran Khan stated that the establishment removed Nawaz Sharif. But just the courts were not enough to remove Nawaz Sharif from the political picture. He went on a wildly popular Mujhe Kyun Nikala tour. So to break PMLN's vote bank in Punjab, TLP emerged, or was made to emerge, as another third force in the province, a far-right Islamic Barelvi party led by the charismatic Khadim Hussain Rizvi. TLP and the PTI together ran a campaign against PMLN, accusing them of blasphemy. A campaign that led to Ehsan Iqbal being shot and fatwas emerging stating that it was haram to vote for PMLN. We even saw money being handed out to the participants of the Faizabad dharna. Justice Kazi Faizisa wrote a scathing review of the establishment role in these dharna, leading to the establishment hounding Kazi Faizisa. President Arif Alvi sent a reference against him, something Imran Khan now washes his hands from by blaming General Bajwa for it. This was another law. Before the 2018 elections, PMLN workers were picked up, PMLN leaders were arrested, PMLN MNAs were made to jump ship. But even all that was not enough to bring Imran Khan to power. On the day of the election, the RTS went down. When all else fails, there is always the good old election day rigging. Even after all that, Jahangir Tareen's plane had to be used and wheels had to be greased to get independents to join PTI. It took all this to make PTI large enough to form a coalition government. PTI supporters are dismayed at people leaving PTI today. But they were rejoicing when the establishment carved apart other parties to make people join PTI. No election in Pakistan is truly free and fair. But the 2018 election was particularly unfair. The opposition was jailed, a blasphemy campaign was run against them, an extremist party created to break their voter base, and electables were made to switch to PTI. DG ISPR Asif Ghafoor even said that 2018 will be a year of Tabdili before the elections. Pakistan Tehreek and Saab became the Frankenstein's monster of a political party. Imran Khan led a party of establishment touts, electables, and sellouts. As they leave PTI in droves these days, hope all PTI supporters can see them for who they are and regret celebrating when other parties were being broken apart to form PTI. Somehow people believed this was a party of change, despite the party having the same faces we've seen for decades. Most of the party consisted of individuals who had run on PMLN, PMLQ and PPP tickets before 2018. This is how the hybrid regime came to be. This is how the military took over. All the participants involved have now admitted their role in it. Imran Khan also admitted the military had all the power. Imran Khan said he was powerless. But is that not just another word for puppet? In PTI's tenure, we saw media freedoms being curbed. Popular TV show hosts were removed, shows were banned, even comics were targeted. There was an attempt to destroy the two biggest media houses in Pakistan, Dawn and Jung Group. Mir Shakilo Rahman was put in prison. Reporters Without Borders labelled Imran Khan a press freedom predator. Numerous journalists were jailed, attacked or picked up. Opposition leaders were jailed and barred from even appearing on TV. Activists in Balochistan and KP were routinely picked up, targeted and even killed. Even the Aurat March faced a sustained campaign against them by the state. They were even made to face blasphemy campaigns against them. Female journalists in particular were targeted so viciously that they had to write a letter asking for more protection. Currently, PTI is facing the brutality of the state. All human rights organizations, activists and independent journalists have spoken against the brutality faced by them. But as the famous German poem goes, then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out. The media could have taken a stronger stance against the state brutality, but the same page PTI regime destroyed the ability of the media houses to do so. Dawn is not as brave as it used to be. PTI, at the behest of the military, took their legs from under them. Social movements like PTM and Aurat March were targeted viciously during PTI's tenure. If they were allowed to develop, they would have had the resources to mount a challenge against the abuse of human rights today. Even a student's march faced sedition charges during PTI's tenure, and activists like Amar Ali Jan were picked up. Movements take years to form. If their legs are cut from under them before they're even allowed to form, then they wouldn't be able to take a stand when you need them. PTI increased the role of the military establishment in Pakistan's affairs. The regressive PICA law introduced by PMLN was expanded by PTI. Now PTI supporters are being arrested for speaking out against the army online. PTI extended the term of the military courts. Now PTI people will be tried in military courts under the Army Act. PTI also put officials of the ISI in civilian matters. And now they have even more power and control. PTI used the ISI and the army to get parliamentarians to pass laws. The attack Imran Khan mounted on the parliament in 2014 achieved success 2018 to 2022. Imran Khan routinely went on television to defend all of this. I'm against trying any civilian and military courts, but Imran Khan wanted people to be tried under military courts. Imran Khan wanted Pika to be used against his critics. 
Imran Khan wanted the entire opposition to be jailed because they spoke against the establishment. And now the boot is on the other foot. The problem is that once it is out, it is impossible to put the genie back in the bottle. The current PDM setup is a sham. The establishment is controlling everything, but this is the hybrid setup that was invented for Imran Khan. Undoing it was always going to be painful. PMLN and PPP would have been a better position to mount a challenge for civilian supremacy if PTI and the establishment had not cut them both down to size for years. In April 2022, the option PDM had was to remove Imran Khan through the VONC or to see him make General Fares the COAS, give Chief Justice Bandial an extension, rig the 2023 elections, be PM again and jail the entire opposition. After suffering through NAP courts and prison sentences and sham cases for years, the opposition had no appetite for more. They only ever had one choice. And thus, what ko is the do became boot ko is the do. And the primary responsibility for all this is with the creators, those who will not suffer the burns of the fires they lit. Imran Khan is an anti-politics politician. His politics getting popular have increased the space for the establishment in the political sphere and reduced the role for democracy. Musharraf said the constitution was a piece of paper to be thrown in the dustbin, and Imran Khan tried doing exactly that in April 2022. He then destabilized the entire system based on a cipher that he has backtracked on himself. He then tried to stop the appointment of General Asim Munir as COAS. then asked for a deal from the same general asim munir till this day he refuses to talk to politicians but has admitted he has tried to talk to general asim munir multiple times political problems have political solutions if imran khan had just sat in the parliament after the vonc and acted like a proper opposition without trying to burn down the country so he could rule over the ashes he would have had a clear path to win elections to become prime minister the economy was unmanageable and it was always going to blow up in pdm's face the fuel subsidy atom bomb imran khan set up for them was a recipe for disaster from day one all imran khan needed to do was to focus on inflation and run election campaigns based on that rather than inventing a fake american cipher conspiracy but imran khan chose to shoot himself in both his feet and now that an attempt is being made to undo project imran khan if we are to look back at the last 12 years what has pakistan gained from imran khan the little gains democracy made 2008 to 2018 were undone we are in a quasi military dictatorship the military has more control over everything Society is more polarized than it has been for decades. The economy is in shambles. The hope millions placed in change has been extinguished. Those die-hard PTI supporters have lost faith in Pakistan as a country. The elite that could afford to have jumped ship. What exactly did Pakistan gain from Imran Khan? It is not the awam that has disappointed Imran Khan. It is Imran Khan who has disappointed the awam. He never realized the trust millions placed on him was not his alone. He trampled upon the hopes, dreams and ambitions of change. just to become prime minister and then repeatedly profited financially from his position as prime minister imran khan could have had everything and he threw it all away to be in bed with people like malik riaz sheikh rashid and chaudhry parvez ilahi if he had stayed out of politics maybe imran khan would have been second only to abdul sattar idi as the greatest pakistani just as cricketing glory and philanthropic work was enough to make him a legend he would have been welcome everywhere in pakistan as a national hero he could have used all that goodwill to bring so much good to pakistan But by choosing to be the frontman for the establishment, he derailed democracy in Pakistan. He perpetuated the years-old narratives of the establishment against politicians and politics altogether in Pakistan. He destroyed the credibility of every single institution in the country. If only Imran Khan had refused to be a pawn of the military establishment, he might have never become prime minister. But even as a politician, he would have been able to create mass awareness and push the country towards change. He could have done an excellent job sitting in the opposition, creating public pressure on the government to do better. Bernie Sanders managed to pull the entire Democratic Party to the left without ever becoming president. But Imran Khan's ego would never have allowed him to do so. His desire to be in the spotlight has cost Pakistan a lot. And those who unleashed Project Imran Khan, they are sitting pretty with their millions stashed around the world. They will not face any consequences. As always, it is the poor people of Pakistan who will suffer. That is the Pakistan that always loses. And the blame for all of that Well, that must surely fall on Ian Botham for getting out on a duck in the 1992 World Cup final.